Hi, everybody. Welcome. Saturday, April the 6th of 2024. Uh, New York had that uh, earthquake. Taiwan had their earthquake. Um, a gentleman posted a picture of the damage that was done at the earthquake in New York. Let me fix this. And uh, it kind of cracked me up because it showed that he spilt a couple drops of coffee and his salt shaker fell down. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Well, I want to welcome you today. I uh, hope you're enjoying yourselves. I hope you're enjoying these uh, teachings uh, that I've been doing in the book of James. We're going to take a break from the book of James today. Uh, we'll pick that up on Monday. But I wanted to share with you today a rec uh, about something that um, uh, I've kind of been meditating on and thinking about. And um, as I do that, I want to remind you to go ahead and like, comment, and share on these videos. Uh, going to, uh, you know, my YouTube channel, uh, subscribing, my podcast channel, subscribe there. Um, and this way, just to help out with the ministry, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to be having a tax deductible place where you can give into this ministry. Um, uh, for my schooling next year, I'm looking for $5,500 uh, to get to the school. Um, and that's for the whole year. It's $5,500 for the whole year. Plus, there's a missions trip uh, as well. And I, I'd like you to give into that. Uh, you can go to um, my podcast, Tom and Sarah, and uh, like, comment, and share it. You can go to uh, my YouTube, Tom and Sarah, like, comment, and share uh, share these videos here on Facebook and, um, and go from there. It's just, you know, something that we do, something that, uh, I try to do, um, for others and just to kind of help their ministries out. Well, I welcome you today. Uh, and again, I'm talking about some things that are, oh, Tom and Sarah at outlook.com is how to get a hold of me. If you have any questions or if you want to give your heart to Jesus, you know, contact me and I'll be glad to help. Um, uh, one of the things that I've been uh, working on uh, as far as meditating on is the robe of Jesus. Do you remember when Jesus was was uh, crucified and, uh, and they whipped him those 39 times? And again, they can only whip him 40 times. And so uh, they do it for 39 in case they lose count. Uh, God never loses count. And um, and so when I think of the robe that he wore, um, you know, it, it was um, it was gauze uh, texture. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're just cotton and uh, things. And he wore it. And uh, they they ripped off his clothes and they beat him, and then they put this purple robe on him, and um, and they used it on him. Now his wound grabbed a hold of this garment. It grabbed a hold of his tunic or cloak or robe, whatever you want to call it. And he, uh, and, and they decided, you know, um, and as the wound started to adhere to it, it kind of runs like a, um, like if you were to put a cotton gauze bandage around a wound, uh, the blood would adhere to this, gauze or this uh cloth and uh and then so when they made him carry the cross they put this crown of thorns on him and chris valentin um did something that uh mentioned something on sunday last sunday that really uh struck my heart and that was that um that the thorns on his head um go back to and 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 you look at what happened with adam he said by the sweat of your brow you're going to um till the ground but it's only going to produce uh thorns and thistles um and that is part of the curse that that happened and basically you're going to do the right thing but the wrong thing is going to come about the wrong thing is going to come up um there's the law of sowing and reaping and that law says that you will 
um, that you will sow and you're going to reap what you sow. In other words, if you plant uh, roses, you're going to get roses. If you plant orange trees, you're going to plant, if you plant orange seeds, you're going to get orange. If you plant mustard seeds, you're going to get mustard plants. If you plant, plant potato seeds, you're going to get potatoes or whatever. And, um, and so that's the law of sowing and reaping. And then there's the law of the kingdom uh, called blessing and where you don't sow, but you reap the goodness of the kingdom. All right. And so you have these three things and this thorn, a crown of thorns that they put on his head. They were about eight inches, or, sorry, two inches long or so. And they placed it in his head and blood dripped down. And Jesus was even paying for the initial curse of the first sin um, in the garden when Adam ate. Um, you know, God, uh, God shows no partiality. And really it was Eve that was deceived, Paul said. But man did it on purpose. And Eve being quite deceived, she fell in a temptation. But Adam did it on purpose. And basically, Adam left his post. He was supposed to be with her. He was supposed to nurture her. And so they have, we have this curse. And it's basically that we need to understand that the, that curse, Jesus paid for that as well with the crown of thorns on his head. Jesus took, there's 8 billion souls alive today, and Jesus took the sin of all 8 billion of them. And that doesn't include how many people in history have been alive, nor does it include all the people future that have yet to be born and their sins. So there's a lot of people, 16 billion, 20 billion people that um that that jesus took every sin that they had and god um wanted him to do that god asked him to do that they planned it before the foundation of the world before eve even sinned they planned this out and what god is doing today and what god is saying today is it's time um, to, for redeeming. And so he placed the crown of thorns on his head from the curse and then uh, took the wounds of us. By his stripes we were healed. The chastisement or the punishment for our peace was laid upon him. The deal is that the crucifixion and this thing was brutal. It really was. However, when I think of this robe, and, and, and I'm going back to the robe in just a second. Um, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. They just didn't know what they were doing. Forgive them. Um, Jesus had this in his heart to forgive. Um, I, think of, I think of all the ones that... Uh, um, um, had gone by that I had known that have wronged me, wronged me. And, um, and those ones, you know, it was hard for me to forgive them, but I had to forgive them. People have forgiven me and the people have forgiven you. And so we recognize that. And then here's this robe. Jesus' back is wide open. Many people believe that you could see his ribs. Um, you could see the scars and, um, the blood the man was in shock and so um many people would die just from that but jesus knew he was supposed to hang on the cross and so finally he cries out he's hanging on the cross and he cries out it is finished what did they do as they were nailing his hands or before they nailed his hands and feet to the cross what they did was they went ahead and they tore this robe off of him again. And remember, the, the, the blood was adhering to it. And it, it's warm in Israel. And so what, what happened was um, the warmth or dried up the blood very quickly. And so it adhered to the robe. And then they ripped it open and the wound was open again. Have you ever pulled a, um, 
pulled a Band-Aid or a bandage off of a wound and it wasn't quite healed yet, well, what happens is, and actually, if you pull it off, um, it'll, it'll just open the wound again. Well, that's what happened. And we have to recognize that Jesus um, paid for all of the reopening of the wounds that we experience. It's a tough thing. He's, he, pays for, he pays for and paying for all of the reopened wounds. Um, I have some people that I know that have wronged me and, 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 and left some scars in my life. And, uh, and then so what happened is that when I see them again or something is said, it reopens the wound of that moment. Well, Jesus paid for that. And I can forgive them because Jesus forgave me. He says, if you forgive men their sins against you, my father will forgive your sins against him. And every sin that we commit is against him. This robe, and there's a movie called The Robe where the soldiers were... You know, they, they, they wanted, the, everybody wanted this robe. Well, um, the robe that he had, um, they, they cast lots for it. They kept all of his clothes in one piece, and especially this tunic. They didn't want to rip it because it was woven from the top to the bottom. And ir not ironically, but powerfully, Jesus tore the, the veil of the temple from top to bottom. It ripped from top to bottom, and it wasn't because of the earthquake. God said, now we have, everybody has access to the throne of grace if they would just come in faith to Jesus. It's really all you have to do. Um, I want to tell you that the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of God even takes care of the reopening of the wounds. God will take care of the scars. Remember, uh, somebody said the only things in heaven that were man-made were the scars on Jesus' body, his hands, his feet, and his side. Jesus heals our scars. Now, I got to tell you, uh, I broke my arm and I had to have surgery on it. And uh, there's a scar there. There's a scar where the surgeon, um, you know, I don't know if you can see it. Oh. Kind of tough from that angle. Let's see if you can see the scar. Um, there it is right there. Anyway, um, there's the scar. And that scar is left as a reminder of the testimony. Um, I, uh, uh, you know, since then, I was in a, a fire starters class. And I felt this heat go through my arm. And that plate, that uh, titanium plate that was in there doesn't feel like it's in there anymore. I haven't had an x-ray on it. Um, but it doesn't feel like it's in there. I, I cut my thumb, you can see the scar there, with a table saw. And really, I should have lost my thumb. And um, I pulled back just in time, and it took them a while to sew it together. My artery had, uh, had been severed. Uh, that goes into the thumb, and so they had to suture it together. And it, it affected the way I played my guitar. And I couldn't do bar chords anymore. Um, I had broken my hand here. Uh, this bone got broken in two places, here and here. And the bone, um, I was playing basketball and it got stuck in a guy's bicep that was going for the ball, got stuck in a guy's bicep like this, and the ball came and broke my, broke my hand, uh, bone right there. Well, a few Sundays ago, Pastor Bill was, was sharing and he had words of knowledge. And... Um, and one was for, he had many words of knowledge, but three of them were for me. One of them was my back. Another one was my, the, the curve of my neck here. And then the other one was the reattachment of bones. Now, I didn't expect God to heal that, okay? And I wasn't looking for God to heal that. The pain in my back and my neck was, was so severe. And in fact, the, the pain right here causes migraine headaches. And so... Um, I got home and this fire went through my hand and, uh, and I, and, and I woke up the next morning and I played with the bone and the bone was connected. Usually I could move it and it's painful. If I played the guitar, it was painful. 
Um, sometimes a bone would move on its own and it would be painful. And I would have basically a crevasse right here. And, uh, and I would joke with people and I would go ahead and drink water out of it, you know, kind of thing. Uh, well, the bones connected again. Freaked me out. I was like, I wasn't even expecting it. But when my hand caught fire, my first, well, it didn't catch fire, fire, but it was like the fire of the Lord. I felt the heat of the Lord. And I thought it was because I was supposed to pray for somebody for healing. Now, I was already home and it was tough to do that. And I was like, well, Lord, who is this healing for? And I could have texted them or whatever, but uh, I, I didn't. And then the next morning, uh, I realized that my hand was healed. I haven't gone to the doctor, but uh, for, for x-rays, and I'll do that if, if the situation allows, but I know it's healed, okay? I can feel that it's healed. And so we, we have to recognize this and we have to understand this, that there is something that God is doing in our hearts that he wants to continually do every day. And one of those is to heal the scars. A lot of times we, 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 we carry these scars with us because for some reason we want to get revenge. You know, um, we, 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 we feel like God can't take care of it. I'll take care of it. Well, that's when God takes his hands off of you. When we allow God, a gentleman wrote a comment to me on, on, uh, on TikTok. And uh, he said that, you know, the battle is the Lord's question mark. And he says, uh, where is he when I fail? Or I fail um, and I don't feel like the battle is won. Well, we all fail. The scars that we have, we fall into temptation. And that's why we need a savior. That's why we need the Lord. He said, come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, on you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you'll find rest for your soul. Our souls need rest. Every day they need rest. And you have to understand that when they tore that robe off, it reopened all the wounds. How many times in his life did Jesus cry? Jesus wept. The Bible only, only says a couple of times, and one specifically was when uh, Lazarus was dead, and, and he stood at the tomb, and the Bible only says Jesus wept. And a lot of people say, well, that was because he was sad because his friend Lazarus was dead, or a lot of... Uh, Theologians say he was crying because of the lack of faith. I don't know why he cried. I do know this, that he did. He did cry. The power of God wants to come on you. The power of God wants to give you the strength to overcome your weakness. Power of God wants to want you to come and to uh, and to give him the scar that you're facing. Now, yes, I know husbands that abuse wives and wives that abuse husbands. I know that there's a lot of relationships around friendships and things where the scars hurt. I happen to have hurt a number of people, and and Lord knows I am sorry. Good friends. that we're no longer friends because of it. I was wrongly fired from a couple of jobs, wrongly. One job, I think I shouldn't have gotten fired. We should have just had a talk, but I started to treat my co-manager the way that they treated me and they didn't like it and I got fired for it. Why didn't that person get fired? I don't know, but it was a scar. And God has to heal the scars. And now he, listen to me, he brings up the scars. He brings up those pains because it is his intention to rid us of the scars of this thing. It's his intention to get rid of the scars in our life. 
but he wants us to have that testimony because when we testify of Jesus, beautiful, when we testify of Jesus, it's the spirit of prophecy. There's a story from Azusa Street that I want to share as we close. And, and uh, there was this woman that um, was all of 65 pounds and uh, she had cancer. She, it was just a hardship. Anyway, she, it, it took her about three hours to walk three blocks to get to Azusa Street at the warehouse. Anyway, she comes in and um, Sister Lucille McGillicuddy, that was her name, uh, Lucille Ball, uh, paid a lot of money to get the name McGillicuddy, to be able to use the name McGillicuddy on her show. And anyway, this woman comes w stepping in. She had the walker, and she had days to live because of this cancer that was ravaging her lungs. She walked in, and they started to pray. Uh, Sister Lucille started to pray. And she, I think it was Lucille. Anyway, she, she, she prayed for her, and this woman could start to breathe. And in the testimony, this woman gained weight during the meeting. She went back to the doctor, Dr. Wyatt. I remember the name, Dr. Wyatt. And he had her fill out the first time form, first time uh, medical form. And she said, don't you recognize me? And the doctor said, no. And then she, she told him who she was. And he, he's like, how did you gain it? How did you do that? Did you go to that meeting? And, and she said, yeah, I went to the meeting. She was totally healed. And eventually her granddaughter married the doctor's grandson. Isn't that crazy? So anyway, um, that's something that, you know, that's powerful. All the ways that we've been wrongly treated, Jesus took care of it on the cross. And I want to tell you today that you're not too far gone. You're not lost. You're not out of it. God wants you to know that you can be free. Remember, unforgiveness, unforgiveness does not ravage the person you're not forgiving. It ravages you. When you forgive, it's not necessarily for that person. It's for you. Why should that person live rent-free in your brain? I don't know. Well, don't let them. So anyway, that's all I wanted to share today. Um, I want you to get the book, um, uh, The Stories of Azusa Street and Beyond, The Miracles. Uh, of Azusa Street and Beyond. Tommy Welchel wrote the book. Uh, you can get that book. It has tremendous testimonies in there of teenagers, really, that are praying for people to be healed. People in, that are younger than 30. And, and, and like literally, each person would see three or four a day be healed. I want that. I want Jesus to use me to heal the wounds of a lost and broken world. Well, anyway, that's all we're going to talk about today. I just want to thank you for joining me for this Saturday. Enjoy tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll pick up on James chapter 3 next uh, uh, Monday. But right now, just rest in his presence and know who he is. He loves you and he cares about you. So having said that, Tom and Sarah... Uh, at Outlook.com is how to get a hold of me. Like, comment, and share this video. Um, you know, um, go to my face, my YouTube channel, my podcast channel, and uh, wherever you get your podcast, it's on there. Tom and Sarah, uh, and subscribe to those and get the notifications. These, these, these are some ways that you can help as well to grow this ministry. Well, God bless you guys today. Enjoy yourselves. And um, yeah, if you want to give into this ministry, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. That's how to get a hold of me. Well, anyway, God bless you. Have a great day.